in to the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey. 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 Looking like a football team. I hear you, Jersey Drake. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? What's up, After Buzz TV viewers? I'm your host, Brandon London. I want to welcome you all to the football offseason show. I started this show for you. I started this show for me. I started this show for everyone out there who does not want to watch hockey, who does not want to watch football aka soccer even though that's one of my favorite sports who does not want to watch basketball we want to talk football we want to talk football now we're back to our thursday time 4 p.m pacific time which is 7 p.m eastern you should be done with your tinder dates so fellas ladies come on call in if you want to if you need to hit me up on twitter at cultured athlete at after buzz tv if you have a question, you have some sort of a response, if you're sitting there looking at home, you're probably probably looking like, that guy doesn't look like a football player. He looks like a model. Hey, exactly. <laughs> I'm a yeah, little something. Uh, I do a little something down here. But once again, like I said, let me reintroduce myself. Brandon London, Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants, played, uh, played with the Miami Dolphins, had a brief cup of tea with the Pittsburgh Steelers, went up to Canada in the 2010 season, won a great cup with the Montreal Alouettes, and just retired this past uh, season in training camp. I live both leagues, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, thank you. I breathe football up north in Canada and down here in the United States. So without further ado, let's get into the CFL portion of the show. I have my boy calling in from Regina, Saskatchewan. My boy Luke Mullinder, CFL analyst, prospective.ca, writer, journalist. Did I mess that up, Luke? My bad, homie. Go ahead, correct, correct me, man. Correct me, man. It's ProPerspective.ca, but this is your show, brother. Okay, B. okay. Let's go. You know, you've been on here a couple times, too, and I'm messing yeah. that up. My my apologies, my man. My apologies. You can see Luke Millender look right there with his Sunday's finest suit, going to yeah. church in it, looking good, looking clean, looking like a million bucks. He's got the, the Bentley. I see you riding in the <laughs> Bentley up there in them so Regina streets. Luke, what's up, man? <laughs> Nothing much, man. You know what? Uh, actually sitting outside one of my favorite spots in Saskatchewan to eat. I'm about to go and crush a couple steaks after me and you chat. A couple steaks? What's the place name? What's what's the name of the place? Uh, the place's name is Crave Kitchen and Wine Bar. A lot of people in the CFL okay. know it because it's usually it's right across from us, the uh, the hotels that do the that uh, the visiting teams stay at. Okay, so it's actually a, a featured spot here. So I think, all right. So where we stayed at, I don't know if it was called the Fairmont. I forget what it was called. Mm -hmm. The Fair. That's the Fairmont, right? Yeah, it's literally uh, a block over. So there's a park across the street. It's to the right yeah. with all those bars Absolutely. and all that. Yeah. I've, hey, I've had some good times at those bars, man. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think you... you uh, it'd be a different show if we went into what we did at those bars, but you uh, know... I mean, uh, it's you, a, you know what? Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we can't go too deep into that. You know, yeah. it's off-season. We're not up there. We, we're not having games. We're not staying the night. The What some people at home need to know is when you go and you play a CFL team, usually you'll stay the night after mm. the game. And sometimes if you go out west, if you're an eastern team going out west or a western team going out east to get acclimated to the time zone difference, you stay the night around, you know, two or three, two, or th two nights before, and then you play the game, and then you stay the night after, and you wake up, catch your flight the next morning. But Boom. the thing about the CFL, there's nine teams there. Just about every player has played on every team somehow. So how many teams do you play on up there, Luke? Uh, Three. Uh, so I spent uh, eight years in, in Sa actually seven and a half years in Sask, and then I uh, finished out there with you in Montreal. Okay, so yeah. players, we know each other. You know, yeah. guys have been teammates. Now you're lining up against a guy to go beat him deep or, or do what you have to do, jam him on the line. So we play each other. We hang out. We have a great time. But 
you know, that's that's the playing days. It's off season now up there in the CFL loop. Kinda kinda tell me some of the let's talk about some of the moves that are happening. Free agency is you know it, well, somewhat complete. You know what? I mean, we, we really talked about the major moves last show when, yeah. we, when we when we chatted, you know, and now what I think you're starting to see, um, you're starting to see, you know, now those veteran signings that teams need yeah. to complete locker yeah. rooms. You know, you guys got a guest on here next, Chris Getzlaff, um, that's leaving Saskatchewan to go to Edmonton. And he's going to be a perfect addition in that Edmonton locker room because, they, you know, they need leadership, um, you know, w- along with that, that, that talented group of players. And, and who better than a guy? guy who's won two great cups and has sort of been in every situation and scenario in the CFL. You know, you're starting to see the same thing with a guy like Macho Harris going from actually Saskatchewan again over to Winnipeg, having a lot of winning experience, great cup championship pedigree. You know, so teams are starting to fill out their rosters in that way. I mean, just a couple of days ago, the Toronto Argonauts announced that they had signed a guy like Justin Hickman. Justin now, Hickman, the boy yeah, can you play, lose yeah. A guy like Akpalagbo and, uh, Akpalagbo and, um, and Cleon Lang through, through going NFL to the, and free to agency. NFL. You yep. know, you need to fill spots, and, and Justin Hickman. Hickman's a guy that's produced in the CFL and has also been to the to the Great Cup Championship game. So, you know, they also have Ricky Foley, as you know, on the other side. And that's what we're starting to see, B. We're starting to see these veteran signings that, that really round out locker rooms and as, as people shift into the mind frame of, uh, of, of their development camps in Florida or wherever they go and, uh, and the, free eight, uh, the CFL draft. So the draft's coming up, like you said, from... Um, the latter part of free agency is kind of calming down. And you mentioned yeah. some of those guys' names, like the Justin Hickmans, uh, Macho Harris. I believe Tyrone Brackenridge or those guys, are they're still out there. So yeah. basically what he's saying, ladies and gentlemen, is you've, you've, these teams have given their money to the guys yeah. they want to give the money to. Yeah. The guys who we expect you to put up 1,000-plus yards rushing, 1,000-plus mm-hmm. uh, yards receiving. We expect you to have five interceptions at least now they're here to round out the would you say role players and bringing yeah, these guys yeah. in I mean, role players that's what you're getting now is you're yeah. getting those role players and and we understood at the beginning of free agency that it was that it was definitely a buyer's market you know the the, the supply uh, definitely outweighed the demand and, yeah and there were a lot of expectations about you know getting big big money cfl you know wise but uh you know not a lot of guys i think a lot of guys were disappointed in, in the value that they actually they, they legitimately have in the CFL right now. So, um, you know, and one of the great things about, you know, what's going on in the era we're in this league is, is you know, shows, are, shows like yours are valuable now because we're actually seeing a lot of guys from the CFL migrate to the NFL, yeah. you know, and, and get treated, you know, like draft picks, essentially. I mean, you look at Eric Rogers, who, who, who they're, they're treating like a draft pick and giving that guy money up front. You know, it's not just, hey, you know, the days of you can have an opportunity, but we don't know about you. You know, those are slowly starting to turn. They're slowly starting to turn. And I yeah. think the turning point was Cameron Wake. Yeah, absolutely. What? Cameron Wake. And, and, and I think people are really hoping that Eric Rogers does sort of, um, does sort of the same thing yeah. um, going from Calgary out there to the league. I, th- I think that they, he's definitely got that ability. Um, don't sleep on a guy uh, on, on on Lang who just got out there as well who went to the Miami Dolphins. I mean, he's he's a young monster, and, uh, and uh, he, he's definitely going to pay dividends. I mean, you look at especially Val, he's out there competing and playing with uh, a guy like Ndamukong Sue. Endowment in Sue, uh, Lang, Wake. Yeah. The, that's 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 a D line. We know yeah. we, we'll get into the NFL and the NFL part of the show. And Absolutely. Man. I think next week we're gonna do I wanna do a show that uh specifically highlights the players who've went from the CFL and had some big names or, or had some pretty good careers down in the in the NFL. I mean you look yeah. at Devin Brew, you look at Andrew Hawkins, Brendan mm-hmm. Browner, um Who's Jeff Fuller? And don't forget, man. I mean, there's even old school guys like Steve Young and Steve Young, and, yeah, and, and you know Jeff Garcia. Those guys are yeah. CFL guys too, you know. And yeah. So there's been a there's been, I, but the the point is they're starting to become a pipeline, you know. Jeff Garcia and Doug Flutie, I think, were the exceptions, you know. Yeah. And now we're starting to really see NFL teams come and legitimately look. The one year contracts, B London, are, are awesome for players right yeah. now. It gives them a lot of leverage. It gives them, hey, you can ball out and go get paid the next year now, as opposed to being locked into a yeah. two plus one you know i know you're familiar with those contracts yeah. so uh it, it's definitely player friendly in the cfl if you have opportunities to go down south 
uh, explaining what he meant by the two plus one, ladies and gentlemen. Back back in my day, back in our day, uh, I, I don't want to say how old I am, um, but back in our day, if you signed in the CFL, you'd be locked in for two years in an optional year, which the club could could pick up. So uh, you could be up there for three years in a way. But now there's these one one year contracts where a guy can come up north, come up to Canada, play one year, like he said, ball out, go down and potentially get a big payday down in the NFL. And Absolutely. you're seeing a lot of guys doing that. And I think next week that's what we're gonna talk about. Uh the guys that go from the CFL and, and go down to the NFL. But one thing that's coming up is this CFL draft. It's it it how different is it from the NFL draft, Luke. Well, talent, talent wise, I mean, it's nowhere even close. You know, you're, you're talking about a seven round draft. I mean, you get taken in the fourth round, you're still going 32 to 33rd overall. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, the, the, I, and and to be quite honest with you, it's a real crapshoot. You know, you, you get those the guys in the first round and the second round, and then it's pretty much anybody's guess as to how a guy's going to turn out. There's no league. I mean, we got a fair amount of busts in the, in the CFL, you know, for going number one overall. Yeah. You can list them, um, but uh, you know, uh, it's it's something that's it's something that's also been been um, been hindered a little bit, I think, with the uh, with the guys, you know, especially the linemen going down from CIS directly down and getting uh, getting NFL shots, or the guys from the NCAA that are Canadian getting NFL shots. It's it's uh, it's taken a lot, you know. You you, you tended to draft guys. Um, and, and then just essentially say, hey, you know what, redshirting them will wait on them. But now guys aren't, you know, there's a lot of guys now that are going down and taking NFL shots. So it's really thrown a little bit of a wrench into the way CFL teams handle the draft. Why is it that in the for the CFL, the best prospects that come into this uh, this draft and, and that get drafted are linemen? Like, why is that? Well, because a in the CIS, you know, obviously they're passing a lot. I think that, um, I think that, you know, you can if you you're not you don't need to look to Canada for a wide out or a running back. You know what I mean? Because they're down in Florida. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, they're all in Florida and California. Why why bother going to the Canadian Football or the Canadian College League, right? But you know, old linemen. In, that's that's a specific skill set, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're starting to see a couple D line trickle in, but yeah, those old linemen from Canada, I mean, they're valuable and, and they're and they're proving that they can play. So I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just supply. You don't need why why bother looking for a wide out in Canada? Why bother looking for a for a for a pass rushing defensive end? You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though there are a few, they'll take the guys who are really raw and talented and stuff. But man, I mean, there's just not a need if you if you really think about it. Yeah, yeah. If I really think about it, there really isn't. And you know, now that I think about it, you're right. There really isn't that much of a need, just because me, me coming from the South and Virginia and such. There's even some so much talent, so much speed down there. And uh, I, I guess wrapping up, the last question I want to ask you, because hmm. the first show we talked, and I kind of got your thoughts on who you thought were, was going to be a Grey Cup favorite right yeah. now and now that free agency has kind of trickled down and yeah. calmed down who would you say now has made the best moves for them to go and yeah. make a great cup run if not win it well you know what yeah so i i think that's how you got to answer the question too you got to answer the question because you know as well as anybody else does be that you don't win great cups or, or nfl or super bowl championships on paper no. um I do think that, you know, Saskatchewan's made the needed improvements, you know, to compete. You know, obviously they, they got a bunch of guys. Um, I really like BC, you know, signing their 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 Canadian talent that they have. Their yeah. Calgary sort of sticks the same way. Honestly, man, I, I'm, I'm like this. Teams have improved. Um, the West is going to be tough. The East is going to be tough until until someone can can really stomp out the Edmonton Eskimos. They've got to be. I mean, they're the Great Cup defending Great Cup champions. You know, they have a they still have a talent pool there, and uh, you know the free agency is good. But all it's really done, especially if you look at Saskatchewan, they needed to make all those changes. They needed to get yeah. talent in there, and all they've done is go from you know uh, a, a bottom feeder right to to yeah. a team that can possibly be competitive if if the injury bug doesn't hit them. So right now, man, honestly, I, I would say Ed. Edmonton, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Toronto and Hamilton do. But uh, until, yeah, until until something happens where, where you can really say, wow, that team's stepping out. And you know how it goes, man. It'll probably be the second half of the season where we see that. Uh, yeah, it's anybody's ball game still. Anybody's ball game, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. You heard it from Luke. You want to be the best, you have to go and beat the best. Absolutely, man.
Great Cup runs through Edmonton this year. Luke, go ahead yeah. and tell the people where they can find you. If uh, and I don't mean in the Bentley parked in front of the steakhouse. <laughs> hey man, you know what? It's uh, Luke at Luke Mall on Twitter at Luke Mall ninety five, and uh, we got uh, our we're starting our ProPerspective.ca blog site up uh, next week again, and we're looking forward to doing that, man. Hey, Luke, really I'm, enjoying coming on this show too. Be appreciate hey man, the thanks for having you on, man. Every weekend, every week, ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Lady, I would say ladies, but he's a married man. You know, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, even though he did get spiffy, he got spiffy for yeah, it. But, know. hey, thanks I'm for coming on, Luke, man. man. I'll see you next All week, right, bro. Absolutely, man. Take it easy. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, that was Luke Mullender, former CFL player. He's now like me, up in the media now. We're media guys now. He's up there in Regina, Saskatchewan, doing his thing. Um, it's a lot of moves being made in the CFL. A lot of a lot of moves being made. And one of the the biggest moves that I see was my next guest who's going to come on. His name is Chris Getzlaff. He was a, a wide receiver for the Rough Riders. That's Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He's now moved on to the Edmonton Eskimos. I really want to get his thoughts because the CFL is changing. Every year it changes. These guys come from the NFL. They come over to come up north to the CFL. Younger guys come from uh, college and they want to get a chance to prove themselves. So organizations kind of, they ch- kind of weed out the older, uh, the older athletes in a way. And uh, we're going to get Chris Guest live up, up here just to see uh, what his thoughts are with him playing with the team, his hometown team in Regina, Saskatchewan, and now moving on to the Edmonton uh, Eskimos. And it's funny because someone was telling me, uh, one of the CFL players hit me up the other day, and he was like, oh, you're getting all these Saskatchewan, all these Rough Rider guys on, because Luke uh, lives in Saskatchewan. He used to play with uh, the, the the Rough Riders, and now Chris Getz laugh is well former Rough Rider. Um, and actually, there he goes on the line. What's up, Chris? Hey, how's it going? What's going on, man? Hey, appreciate you coming on, man. man. Really Really appreciate you coming on on, uh, on, on the show. show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, so where are you at right now? Uh, Have you moved into that new uh, five-bedroom Victorian palace in uh, Edmonton, or are you still in uh, Regina? (laughs) I'm still still hanging in my my place in Regina. Yeah. Um, I'll be here all off-season before heading out there for for the season, and I'll probably live in – something similar to a shed out there so to a shed (laughs) all right so kind of explain how all this kind of came about man uh you're you're from regina born and raised you're playing with your hometown team and then you know two seasons they saying you're plagued with injuries and such like that you obviously turning 33 years old it's time for you to move on but kind of explain how all that happened and what were your feelings leading up to it and coming out of it yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I was uh, had some small talks early on with the the new regime, and um, it sounded as if you know something was actually going to happen, and then kind of tapered off of that, and to the point where uh, they they told me they weren't going to offer me a contract, and um, I was going to have to uh, see first free agency for the first time in uh, nine years. Could you say, in a way, was that? Did you feel as though that was a slap in your face? In a way, for all you've done for them, because I was looking up your stats, man. I know who you are. You know, we're receivers in the in the CFL, we check each other out. We even hate on each other sometimes. Like, I mean, I would have made that catch like it was nothing. But I mean, you had uh, five straight seasons with over 850 yards. Like you had 36 something, 36 I believe, career touchdowns, over 5,000 yards receiving. Do you feel as though it's something where it's just the new regime is coming in to kind of bring in their own players? Or was it something where you feel as though the organization could have maybe get, given up on you a little bit? Um, I think it's 100% the, the new regime. New regime, you know, yeah. They're coming in. They're completely um, new staff. They're, they're new everything, right? Yeah. And, you know, um, they're going to have their guys that they have in mind. And obviously he's had success pretty much everywhere he's been at different coaching levels. And uh, he keeps just moving on up and – uh, obviously, there's uh, some method to the madness. Yeah. So you're you're working out now. You're obviously training. Is it? Could you say this off season and your training, you're approaching it a little bit different? Because would you say you have a bigger chip on your shoulder to prove to everyone? Or is uh, it just? I don't know if I've got a 
large chip on my shoulder okay. or anything, but I'm definitely good to go out and, and I plan on beasting this year. I, you know, last year was an unfortunate year, um, missing eight games of the first time that I've ever missed more than three games in any year. Yeah. And, you know, going through that, I still had decent stats leading into that period. Yeah, uh, you did. Missing those games. So, you know, I, I think that as long as I'm out there, I'm productive. Uh, I feel great. I'm really looking forward to uh, jumping out with this new squad and uh, seeing what we can do. Seeing what you can do. You, uh, like, I keep telling people, I keep saying on the show, the way the CFL works, it's like a revolving door league, man. Like, every year it's like this new kid. Oh, hey, this guy was with the Tennessee Titans. Now nah, he's here. They brought him up here. Oh, this guy's cheap. Oh, uh, they want to bring him up here. What? What can you see? What moves are being made in terms of how do you feel the CFL is going as a whole? You know, in terms of because it's, it's a little different than when I came up there in 2010 now. New logo, new everything, uh, extra team. Um, can you say it's going in a different direction? Uh, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's definitely growing. I think it's going to continue to grow, um, which is great to see. And, you know, there's all, all types of new stadiums going up, which is obviously uh looking out for longevity of the league so um i don't know it's moving in a positive direction if anything i think that the the new one-year deals has really put a big spin on free agency and how teams shape up every year you know i think this is the the first year that i can remember where a lot of long-term guys on different teams have now moved on to another team yeah they're moving on and it's it's crazy because with nine teams up there there's guys who've played for like three to five teams and it's like we all know each other we've all played with one another then the next week you're lining up against the same guy that you used to hang out with and such and i mean i mean it's 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 crazy in a way you know what i'm saying like like i say it's a revolving door league but um what kind of things do you do in your off seasons like what kind of things are you looking to to build on for life after football when that day eventually comes uh, I've been working as a financial planner for just about seven years now, um, currently with Investment Planning Council. So I definitely uh, work that both in the off season and during the season. Um, outside of that, I've been spending the last uh, several off seasons working with uh, the Red Cross here in, okay. in Sask and uh, going out the province and uh, doing a Imagine No Bully presentation to okay. uh, high school students. Okay, involving yourself into the community. Can you, because I saw, uh, what's it going to be like not playing or not lining up next to seven? And for those who don't know who seven is, that's Weston Dressler. Both of you guys are out of there in, in, in Saskatchewan. Like what, kind of tell me what it was like playing with him and, and moving forward, like what type of things, um, well, basically, you know, basically, like, what's what's it going to be like? What was it like, and what do you think is going to be like not lining up with your main man anymore? Yeah, well, really, it's uh, really it's two of the guys, uh, Weston Dressler and Rob Bag. I've I played yeah, with them yeah, for true. Uh, their entire career, and you know, obviously, have uh, developed you know close friendships with them. Uh, so it's it's going to be weird uh, being on a different team. All three of us being on each on a different team. And uh, I'm looking forward to those games. Can you say that Saskatchewan or playing in Regina, not not only just because you're a hometown hometown guy, can you say like the football there is like the mecca when it comes to like fans and the overall football atmosphere in the CFL? I mean, which McCall had Ch Dressler had chips and you had a cereal. And then they had the fan twos flakes, so you guys get all the big endorsements and such out there. So, can you say like that's the mecca of of football in the CFL? I mean, uh, yeah, I think that I think that has to be considered uh, the mecca. I mean, I think that a lot of a lot of teams' fan bases are really growing, and some are growing at a rapid rate. But you know, um, Ryderville has been uh, kind of a top of that game, especially when it comes to merchandise sales. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much uh, sell more than all the other teams combined, which is pretty crazy. Ooh, that is crazy! Getting that money. So the CFL draft or the CFL combine is coming up. Uh, you were drafted by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Can you kind of explain uh, everything, like in terms of the workouts and the combine and the draft, everything leading up to to all that for you when you first came out? Yeah, we just basically flew into. Uh, into Toronto for the combine. Yeah, just a just a two day thing. You know, did your vertical, your broad jump, your bench press, 
uh, 40 and shuttle that type of thing um, and then it was uh, it was the you know the waiting game a little bit uh, leading up to the draft and uh, I actually was uh, on route to see my brother down there in, in Anaheim so okay he, uh, uh, I <laughs> I had a, uh, my uh, buddy Shane on the phone the whole time when I was on my way to to Ryan's, just telling me each pick as yeah. he was watching it. And yeah. um, I actually ended up getting to my brother's place about five minutes before I ended up getting drafted. Wow, that's crazy! And then you went on to Hamilton and kind of explain what it was like being a rookie and then seeing American guys coming in from the NFL and trying to uh, carve your niche on the team and and get on the field. Yeah, well, what the biggest surprise I actually had was, um, you know, I, I was going to camp and I kind of looked up a few few guys that were coming down there, and um, you see guys that have played in the NFL for three years, so you assume that you know they're going to be real solid players and, and stand out. And it was amazing to see um, how sorry they end up sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I'll say it for you. I'll I'll say it for you, bro. Like they come out, everyone hypes them up. Then they come up there and look trash sauce, like really trash. So go ahead, keep going. Yeah, well, and and you know that that was kind of it, and it just gave uh, an eye opener. You know, I I can compete out here, and yeah. I think I can make this team, even though I had three years of college eligibility left. That they they could have sent me back, no problem. So I, I worked my tail off in camp and was able to make the team. Thankfully. Oh man, what was the first thing? You, what first thing you bought with that first real check that you got? <laughs> I probably just paid rent. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no jewelry, no nothing. You're not one of those flashy type guys, huh? Uh, I don't have a don't have a lot of flash. No. Nah, no, no flash. I hang out, go out for dinner, things like that. So let's just spend money that way. Okay, so when you go back and you play in uh, Regina with your new team, you score a touchdown. What's Chris Getz laugh gonna do? And don't give me don't don't give me a humble stuff right now, man. This I'm I'm fighting for ratings down here in LA. Give me give me oh, some spazzazz, man. Give me some spazzazz. What's the first thing you do after you score? I can, I can only imagine the the adrenaline rush when that happens. So I'm looking forward to it. And I, I can't tell you I've I've switched up a few different uh, minor celebrations throughout my career. I, I can't say I've done anything that has been extremely flashy. So. I don't know. I don't know what it'll be. Uh, something with my teammates, I bet, though. You, sir, are going to be commissioner of the league one day with that politically correct answer. That's very <laughs> professional. Very professional. Hey, Chris, go ahead and tell the people where they can find you at, man. I on, on social media. I appreciate you coming on, bro. Yeah, you can find me at uh, chrisgetslaff.com or uh, on Twitter at chrisgetslaff or Instagram chrisgetslaff. And the website and such to the Red Cross and and the bullying stuff that you do cuz people should really reach out to you and uh and 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 book you and bring you in for stuff like that as well. Yep, they can find that on chrisgetslaff.com. There'll be a link. Oh, yeah. Boy, got links and all that, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's class right there, ladies and ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Chris, I appreciate you, man. Uh, like, like for real, I've been a big fan of you since I got up there, man. I always used to check out you, West, Weston, uh, Rob, all you guys playing some really good football out there, man. And uh, I appreciate you. Like I said, I appreciate you coming on. If at any time you're ever down in L.A. again, man, I'll take you out. But you can't wear the running wedding ring, man. These L.A. nights are crazy, bro. Uh, I, I can't take it off, so you know I'll have to hit you up for something else. But. All right, man. I'll take you to dinner or something. I'll take you to dinner, man. All right, sounds appreciate good. you, man. Have a great day. All right, you too. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. That was Chris Getz laugh. I'm telling you, I'm a huge fan of football, CFL, NFL. I watch Arena from time to time as well, but. I'm just a huge fan, and it's like I said earlier, we would watch games. I would be with my teammates or my receiving core, and we'd always watch other teams' receiving cores and uh, what they were doing in the game, who's making what catch. And we always used to watch the Saskatchewan Rough Rider uh, wide receivers because it was just like, man, these guys, they're, they're, they're out here eating. Dudes kicking the ball into the stadium. The, the fans going crazy for them. These dudes get having uh, deals where they're getting chip deals, cereal deals. And it was like, man, you got to love the CFL, ladies and gentlemen. But that's all I have for you in terms of the CFL. We're going to switch over. It's time to cross over to the NFL. 
recalling uh, NFL host, analyst, Emery Hunt for football game plan. We're going to get him on as soon as I see him on the Skype. That's why I keep looking up there. This is the, the Skype and the TV screen up there. Um, we're going to get him on. But, man, what a what a week in the NFL. What a week in the NFL. L. There is a lot going on with people getting cut, uh, people signing new deals, franchise tag is coming out. There was the, uh, what was it, the combine. i tell you what, for a 9, 10, 11 billion dollar business, the NFL is doing something right. 